hello and welcome back so let's continue building our back end right here and in this case we are going to concentrate on building models for our mongodb but before that i want us to be able to push our code to our github because we need to make sure that we are pushing our code to the github so i'm going to close these two tabs here where i have opened my emails like that and then i'm going to visit my github so let me open my GitHub right here. And uh, I want to add a new repo where we can be able to add our code. So I'm going to click on the top right here, this plus sign here and uh, add new repo. And here I can add something that we can call beauty store. Let me add beauty store here. I think this one will be just a fine name. And uh, also here, I can be able to create a repo it is a public here and uh, also to go through this process you need to have uh, connected your github with your at least your local machine so here i want us to initialize now github or git so i'm going to also make sure that i am in this folder here for uh, where we have opened our code now for this project and you need to have installed git so if you haven't installed git if you click enter git here you need to be able to see this option here this the option that you can use with git here so i'm going to clear everything like that so let me clear everything like that and inside here in our project we need to initialize git and and before that also i want to do something else before i forget so i want to make sure that i specify things that i don't want to push to my github and i'm going to actually add them here in a file that is called git ignore so if i add here things like dot env because dot env is where we are going to at least add our secret files and also things that we don't want to push to our github also i don't want to push things like um node underscore modules and uh, this is because these are big folders that have the packages that we are going to install in this project and already you can be able to install uh, those are uh, packages if uh, we are cloning this project by using npm install i hope you understand so after that now i'm going to come to the terminal and initialize i'm going to use git ignit here and after that i can add every file inside file and folder inside here by using git add and then dot to add everything i'm going to commit so i'm going to commit here and say uh working working on back end so working on back end like that and then after that then i need to actually take this url here or terminal command like that and paste it here like that let me add it like that and then i need to first of all check the branches that we have so right here you can see we have this branch that is called master so i'm going to push it first of all so git origin and then master like that and and after this you'll be able to see here so let me let me add it let me push it here so now we have pushed our code and if we reload again this project you'll be able to see that we have pushed some code so if i come up here you can see we have a back end here we have actually pushed this folder here and uh, you can notice something with uh, github and git is that it doesn't push an empty folder and this is because other folders that we have in our project right here like admin you can see they are empty backend is the only one that has files and uh, others are empty though so that's why they have not been pushed to github here so what i'm going to do now because i'm working on backend i'm going to create another branch that is called uh, backend so i'm going to add git branch and then backend here like that and then i'm going to switch but before that i want to show you something so if you do this if you do git branch you'll be able to see that you have two branches now because i have created git branch 
uh, called back end here and you can see the one that is highlighted using green this is the active branch that you are working on but right now i want to switch to git backend uh backend branch here because this is where we are going to work on and this is because we are working on our backend so i'm going to do git branch and then backend here like that actually we need to do git checkout sorry git checkout and then backend like that so if i do git branch again so git branch here you'll be able to see that we have switched now to backend here and you can see backend is highlighted using green so that is what i wanted to show you so i don't uh, i think this is okay so what we are going to do now is to continue with our project here and uh, continue working on our models so here i need to work on our models because this is how we are going to specify things uh, like the data schema so let's continue building this project from now the models here and uh, don't forget to subscribe to this youtube channel and also like this video and also turn on the notification bell so that you'd be notified the next time I upload a new video. So now let's get uh, into the tutorial. So now let's continue now. We are going to have uh, like several models. For example, we are going to have user model. So I'm going to have model dot uh, actually user uh, dot model dot js. I'm going to call them like this because in this way you'd be able to understand uh, it is a model so here we are going to have also another one for the banner so banner dot model and then dot js like that uh, we are going to have also others for example we are going to have the one for the order so this one will be order dot model and dot js like that and we are going to have another one that is for product so here we are going to have product so product dot model dot js like that and then now we have our models here so i'm going to close here and i'm going to start with the user model and see how we can create the model for our user so i'm going to import now mongoose so let's import mongoose from the mongoose package like that and also right here now i want to create my schema so i'm going to add const uh, const user schema right here and then we are going to have mongoose and then call the schema uh, here so this schema uh, function and inside schema here we can specify our schema using this uh, object uh, object here and here also we need to do something after this now down here we need to at least make sure that we are exporting so let us export and we are going to export user right here first of all let me create a variable called user yeah so this is user and we are going to get user from mongoose dot now model uh, here and we are going to have user and after user here we are going to this model accept the user and uh, also the schema so you, which is the uh, schema so like that so in our database you'll find that uh, this user here will be a correction so this correction will be named users and not user and this is the conventional way of more mongoose or the mongo to name the like correction so here i want to export default i want to export by default uh user so like that because we are going to need to use it in other parts like controllers and also in authentication so here i want to make sure that i specify how uh, my data will look like so for example here to specify the data you can use the object and for example this one the first one here will be the name so because we need our user to have the name so for the name here we are going to have 
actually i think we can specify here like that yeah like that so here we are going to have the type and you can see yeah it's a uh, very simple so the it will be a string and uh, also we are going to add require because it must be uh, present when we are adding uh, when we are adding the name so this is required i'm going to add it as true and here we you can see that if we don't have the name specified that means that if we send the data for the user that doesn't have name that data won't be saved in the database and uh, we can have another one for example email so email here uh, the type will be string so here this is a string uh, actually it has a capital s also here we are going to have require uh, actually i think this one should be let me see it should be require not required so this one should be true so let me remove this d here because it's require not required so here also we need to have other things for example the password so the password because we are going to save the user with the password in the uh, in the database so i i need to make sure that i add everything the way it should so password here and for the password here we are going to have a type to be string so string here also we need to add require because every user must have their password so so that they can be able to log into our system so like that uh, so we have others now the others here should be very simple so let me add this one here this one should be for the address so this one is address so address like that we are going to remove require here because address is not a must for the user so let me also have another one here and this one will be telephone number or let's call phone here and because it is not required it is not a mandatory we can remove require here and then also i think we can have other so here we need to have a after the phone we can have the role so this one will be role and by default it will be it will be the user so i'm going to add here default so unless we specify the user will be added as user just a normal user not admin so and then we can have the status so here we need to have a status so for this status here this will be number because different number will uh, represent different state of the user for example here i want by default the user the user will have a default number of zero that means that that user is new in our database and email have not been sent to them and then when the email has been sent to them by background services this status here will be updated to one and you'll be able to see that so right now you might not understand but in the future when we are building a background services you'll be able to understand and when we are actually sending emails to our customer welcoming them to our uh, our system so i'm going to format that and you can see how it looks like so when i right click here i'm going i'm using prettier to be able to format my code and i think this also i can push down here so that we can have a good view of our code so i think now the other part that we are going to create now is for the banner here so for the banner here also i'm going to do the same so i'm going to copy mongoose that is the first thing uh here also i want to create now the variable here called banner banner schema like that and also down here we can have we can now call mongoose so mongoose here dot schema like that and then we can have inside here now we can specify the data that we are uh, that we need so here i'm going to have a title for example 
so the title of the banner so this one we are going to have the type to be string to be string like that we are going to have a uh, to be make sure that we require so require to be true like that and also we can have now the other which is subtitle uh, subtitle like that and uh, here we can have the type to be string type will be string and also we are going to have also require to be true so require true uh, here and then the other thing is uh, we need to have like the image so the image here we are going to have the type here to be string string here and also require will be true so we need to have all of this so here let's add require to be true and then here we need to create another variable called banner and this one we can call mongoose and dot model and then after that we can have the banner and then we can have the schema which is banner schema so banner schema here like that and then we can be able to export by default so export default banner like that and then i think that's okay now so what we are going to do right here uh, i think that's okay but there is another thing that i want us to have and that is timestamp so so that when we add this banner to our database we need to have the like uh, the, the created date and uh, created at and update at so here we can have timestamps and this is uh, can help us to do various things so we can have true this as a timestamp to be true so i think here i'm having a, like an error i think uh, we should have it uh, without this uh, curly braces here it should be just timestamp like that yeah i think that's okay so i'm going to format my code right here and i'm going to add this timestamp here to my user also so copy that and in our user here so let me scroll down in our user here we can paste it here and add the comma here so let me format my code right here and i think that's okay now i am going to close this and here you can be able to see that we have this model and also for the banner we have we have it so let's uh, create one the other one for the orders now so i'm going to the orders here and uh, let me go for the user here and copy let me copy this line here and uh, in our order here we can be able to paste it here so like that so the same we are going to create a schema here so order schema and we are going to have mongoose dot schema like that and here we can be able to add now the the data that we need for our orders so i'm going to first of all make sure that we have uh, our order here so order variable then here i'm going to call mongoose dot model and we can have order and we can have the scheme uh, order schema here so order schema this one like that and then we can export default here we can export order so the order here like that I think that's okay now and then inside here now we can specify the data that you are going to have for our uh, the order that you are going or the data that you are going to have for our order now our order will have name so the name of the customer so we are going to need here to have a type here will be string and also it will be required so require this one here should be true 
and uh, also here we can have uh, another field that you are going to have is user id because we need to have this ui user id to be able to at least get the we are we are able to get the user's orders so this one you have a type of string so type string we are going to have a uh, require to be to be true so this one is true we are going to have a uh, another one here which is a uh, products and products will be a bit different so for our products here the type will be array array like that and then it should be required so required so like that to be true so for the other one here you are going to have after products we can have total total here and the total here of course it will be having a type of as number so like that this is a number and also it should be required so required like that i think uh, required uh require sorry so this one would be true we are going to have now the other thing that you are going to have here is uh, the additional things like address so this one will have a type type to be string so string here and i think this one should not be required it is not a must the order have address or you can add it if it's a must so also we can have here like after address we can have the phone number so phone number or phone this one actually should be just a small uh, p so after that we can have another thing here after the phone you can have the email so let's have the email of the user or the person who have ordered and then we can have other variable uh, variable like status so the status here uh, let's add the status status here should be the number and so number and default should be zero so this one means that that order has uh, newly been created so any order that has been created newly it will have a status of zero that means that the email has not been sent to the user or the person who have ordered products and after that this uh, status here will be updated to one that means that that order is still pending but it has not been delivered to the user and then admin will be able to update this to two which means that now it has been delivered and then these are uh, in our background services we are going to have a service that will be checking for uh, an order that has a status of two then it will send an email to the user notifying them that the order has been delivered and then it will update that to three so the same it will happen to status of zero they will they are going to have a service in our background services that will keep checking for an order that has a status of zero and then it will take that it will be able to take that um, or it will be able to send an email to the to the user telling them that the order has been created successfully and they need to to wait for the order to be delivered so i think now the last thing that you are going to have here is a timestamp so let me add timestamps time here to be true like that and then i think that's okay now so i'm going to save this and format my code like that so i think also here i can remove this space and save it so i think this is okay i'm going to actually make sure that i remove that i'll close that and then i'm going to now create the models here for the product product here the first thing that you need to do is uh, the same here so i think let me just import here this line of code to import mongoose like that and then i need to create need to create product schema so product 
schema here and then this one will be mongoose dot schema and then we can have the data here i'm going to create a variable here called uh, product and this will be a mongoose mongoose dot model dot model and then here we are going to have product and we are going to have product schema so product uh, schema like that and then here i can have export default and then product then product like that and then now i think uh, here we can have the data so for example we are going to have the title so the title here we are going to have a uh, type to be string so to be string so this is the title or the name of the product so this one will be so you should have to be required to, so this is true so i think this one now we can be able to copy paste and add other uh, fields here in our uh, product so this one we are going to have a description so disk and then this is a type here it should be string so this is a description here we are going to have uh, another one here and this one will be what is in the box so here we are going to have what uh, what in box so let's call it what in box like that and then i think we can have this one we can remove to required it is not a compulsory thing so also we are going to have another one here which is uh, the image so the image it should be true and also it is a string so also we can have other another one after the image we can have like we can just have a video but it is not a must if the product has a video here you can embed a video from youtube or you can upload a video so this one is not a must so let's have others for example we can have for the wholesale price so let's have wholesale price here so whole sale price like that uh, it is not required and um, but this is a number it is not a string so like that i'm going to format my code right here so let me just also remove this comma here so we can have another one for this one now after wholesale price we can have wholesale minimum quantity so this is the wholesale wholesale minimum minimum quantity quantity like that and this is not required and this is a number so let's change this to be a number after that now we can have another thing which is after that you can have categories so let me first of all format this uh, so this one is categories uh, have categories here categories sorry sorry categories i think that's the uh, the spelling so this one is category and this is array uh, array here and this is not uh, this one is not required so a product can have no category so also we can have after categories here we can have concern because these are filters that we are going to filter concern and this here i'm going to have array so this is array here and it is not required so this is concern so let's look another one here and for after concern we can have a brand so this is brand here so for the brand 
brand is uh, just a string so let us remove this required so uh, let me just scroll down here so for this one let me add a comma here and also we can have after the uh, here we can have skin type so skin type right here and for the skin type here we can have this as array and it is it is not a required here so remove that so after that we can have after skin type we can have original price so this one is original original price like that this one is a number so a number and it should not be required and this one i need to remove this uh, comma here so after original price we are going to have a discounted price so this one is let's have a discounted price here discounted price like that and this one we are going to have it as a number because also this is not a string so this is a number here and i think we can have another one here which is uh, we are going to have if it is in stock so here we can have in stock which is uh, let me add here which is is um, in stock is just a string uh, so let's have a string here and also oh sure this is a boolean sorry so boolean so boolean boolean like that and then by default here it is, should be true so default when we are adding a product of course it is in stock so i'm going to have boolean and the, by default it should be true and here this one is in stock so like that in stock and i think now we can have ratings after that we can have our ratings here so this one is ratings so ratings and ratings also should be like it should be array but it will be uh, it will be different so i'm going to specify things that we are going to have in our array so in our array we are going to have an object and this object should be having a star so a star is the one that you are able to see in products ratings so this one we are going to have a actually this one should be uh, here should be having a type of number like that and then after the star here we can have actually we can just add it as number i think this is much simpler so that you can understand so after the star here we can have the name so for the name here also this one you can have the type uh, the type here should be string or maybe you can add it as a string uh, like that so this is the name of the person who is reviewing this product we are going to have comment so for the comment here uh, for the comment we are going to have a type to be string so string here and also i think uh, we can have after the comment we can have posted by so this is uh, i think this can be the same can be the same name and posted by so this is the type and this is a string here like that so i think that's okay now and i can actually to make them uniform i can just wrap them using uh, this as uh, curry braces so let me just add these curry braces here so type here would be also be string like that so this is a star so already you can see how this uh, product model will look like so this is a very simple one so you can have the title the typo the title has a type string and require to be true we have description we have what is in the box we have image we have video we have whole price wholesale price we have 
wholesale minimum quantity and this is the quantity that after after this quantity if let's say for example the wholesale minimum quantity is 10 after that it will start uh, applying the wholesale price so i want to remove these commas here actually also this and uh, i think to format i need to format this code here i need also to remove this here i think they are inappropriate so i'm going to remove this here like that so remove this this one also i think this also you can remove it so i think that's okay now but remove this also this also this one here so this one this one and this one so i think that's okay now so let me save my code here i can be able to format it and the last thing that we are going to do right here is to push our code so i'm going to add git add yeah and i'm going to do git commit and dash m here and i'm going to add comment worked on uh, on models on models like that and i'm going to do git push origin this time i'm not going to push uh master we are going to push backend like that git push origin backend and i can say support and uh or like our passphrase and then after that we can come back to my github here and when i try to visit now this when i visit now the repository that we have here so this repo you see that we have a notification to do pull request so if you come back here you'll be able to see a pull request so this one so i'm going to compare and pull request right here and i'm going to create a pull request and then i'm going to do the merge i'm going to do the merge here so it's checking for ability to merge automatically right here and then merge pull request and then confirm merge after that now that's okay so we can come back to this here to the insight and under insight you can go to the networks and you'll be able to see that we have uh, this network here we are going to track using this network and see how we create a project so that is it i don't want this video to be longer than this uh thank you for coming this far uh, kindly subscribe to this youtube channel and also like this video and also turn on the notification bell so that you'll be notified the next time i upload a new video have a great day see you in the next video